Hi, I'm Ben Province and welcome to Show Me The Music. On today's show, we'll go backstage at the pageant to catch up with Matt Carney. If you don't know the Oregon Natives music from radio singles like Nothing Left To Lose and Closer To Love, there's a good chance you've heard his unique brand of pop and hip hop on TV. Matt Carney's music has been licensed to multiple network comedies and dramas. The singer's style continues to evolve with his latest release, Just Kids. I did a lot of the new record, Just Kids, honestly on the road myself. So I ended up producing a lot of the record and started with like kind of making like beats on my laptop, you know, on airplanes and backstage on the end of Young Love, my last record. And uh, I just really kind of felt like I needed to spend some time alone. And sometimes you write songs differently when you're by yourself. You'll try things that you wouldn't normally do. And uh, that really became the heart of the record. And then I brought some friends in and they helped me finish it. And yeah, I'm really, really excited about it. And so this is your fifth studio album, fourth one on major label. Uh, wow, yeah. Yeah. I uh, feel old. Fifth record. Fifth record and uh, true. debut. <laughs> I should think about that more often. Can we talk a little bit about your journey to Nashville? You're, of course, from Oregon, yep. but you decided to kind of pack up and just move to Nashville and do this thing. Yes, I was a English major. I actually didn't start doing music until I was um, in college. And I was an English major, and I had, my roommate had a guitar, and I would, like, steal his guitar, and I knew, like, two chords, and I'd write, like, kind of... I knew I could write lyrically, so I kind of learned how to make just a few little simple songs. And a friend of mine said, hey, if you help me drive across the country, we'll record some of them. And he had like a little studio, which meant he had a computer with like one microphone. Um, and so we drove across the country and I got to Nashville and we slept in like a parking lot for a while. And then we rented this terrible ho apartment and we converted the bedroom into like a little home studio. And that was it. I called home, said, I'm not coming back. Old tire in my head. And the drummer in my chest Just take one look in my eyes and they will confess My career's kind of been like you're building it as you go. It's like figuring out how to build the ship as it's already set out to sea. But um, yeah, Nothing Left to Lose was like probably, you know, it was like the first 12 songs I'd written. It was like an album. So it was just super exciting and I was experimenting with styles. And I think some of like what my trajectory of my career was like experimenting with genre. And even, you know, in 2007, like having blending hip hop with like kind of like folk and songwriter music wasn't, it was pretty odd to people. I think there was like, everybody hear my music and there was like Everlast or G Love where they, they just didn't have a lot to compare it to. Um, Do you think Jason Mraz kind of, he, he was in something at least fairly yeah. similar. Do you think that kind of opened the door uh, to make Nothing Left to Lose, um, you know? Maybe, yeah. I mean, he, that was happening. I, I don't know my timeline very well. Um, yeah, he was did the real rhythmic thing, mm -hmm. and uh, definitely helped. Probably gave a comparison for me. Sure. A lot of people would compare me to him, and I toured with him a couple times around okay. that process, around that era. Okay. But yeah, I was just like, I was like just a kid who grew up on hip hop music, right. and like knew like a few chords on my guitar, and I didn't really know how to produce music, so I would like play a few songs and then kind of like tell stories over it, and that was like, I was like, I can do this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And so that was really what got me started was like kind of that avenue. And then just from there, I've incorporated different styles and learned how to and grown as a songwriter and that kind of thing. And City of Black and White kind of kind of take, took a step away from hip hop. Yeah. Um, why was that? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd moved to Nashville and I think at that time I was really inspired by like Amy Lou Harris and Neil Young and yeah. Bruce Springsteen. And I was like, and Nothing Left to Lose was such a big song for me. That was kind of what put me on the map, and it was more of a traditional songwriting thing. So I wanted to explore that more and kind of make this really, it was like a band in a room. We did like a lot of the songs were just like performances. We rented this crazy studio in Nashville called Blackbird, which yeah. had like every cool band had worked there. And I, I wanted to make a more traditional songwriter driven record, um, and we did. And, and uh, you know, it was also terrifying making a sophomore record if you, you know, sure. you just make one record and it blows up. You're like, wait, how do we do this again? So we made this atmospheric band record and I was like, we spent a, you know, it was like a big studio and you're looking at like how much money's going out, like every day, you're, the record label's paying for you to make this record. And I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh -huh. And so we went back to like me and a buddy in, in a 
yeah. home studio yeah. in a base in a you know basement somewhere. And I was like, I like this more. Like this is more, you know. Then that was just how I, how I uh, loved making records was like building it up from scratch and yeah. kind of that loop like more hip hop influenced and. Um, Young Love kind of happened. There was a song called Ships in the Night. It was yeah. one of the first ones we had written. We had this kind of vibe that you're like, whoa, I like, okay, we should do more like this. And that kind of became a cornerstone for the record. And I think, I think Just Kids is the next step from Young Love. I think it, it makes a lot of sense as an album. Um, you mentioned you, of course, live in Nashville. Can yeah. you talk about some of the, being a part of that music scene, what, what that means to you? Yeah, um, I think uh, being in Nashville really super exciting and everybody is moving there which is kind of there's a lot more like nice coffee shops now than when I first moved there but there's also a lot of traffic but um <laughs> it's just you know made some some of my best friends are artists and you just kind of form a relationship and you lean on each other when you need to help and um for encouragement and chords you need and microphones, you borrowed gear and yeah. guitars and um, yeah, I, I really, Nashville's just a special place. I just finished my studio that's there, you know, I have my own little spot and just a community. There's just such a kind of influx of artists and and it's a really like kind, supportive artist community. You know, like I feel like compared to other cities, LA's really good and they're just the cream of the crop in LA. They're like real competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, New York is like the old school scene and they're, you know, they're New Yorkers so they're like chip on their shoulder in a cool sure. way. Sure. And Nashville is just really warm and like welcoming and people are genuinely supportive of each other and help each other out and um, that's a really special place to be right now. Yeah, and you've worked with some great songwriters like Trent Dabbs and Tyler Burkham in your band. Yeah. Um, obviously he, with Audio Adrenaline did a lot of great, yeah, yeah. great songs. Um, what does it mean to you to have those guys kind of uh, in, in your corner and to co-write with? Uh, it's just really special and, and um, Trent Dabbs is a super talented. He's one of my best friends, so we always like end up working on a few songs on a record just because you're hanging out talking about life and you play him an idea. He's like, What if you did this? you know, and then all of a sudden you're writing a song, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's really uh, different records. Young, uh, young, young Love was really collaborative, uh. Just Kids was probably the least collaborative. This new one, I was okay. kind of, I needed to go away and do it by myself. But Nashville and that kind of community is really, you know, people bring you choruses. Like, sooner or later, I didn't write the hook to that. Like, my friend had the chorus. He's like, what about this idea? I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. So we wrote the verses and, you know, I get all the credit for it. But, um, but there's a lot of great people around me that have helped me write some great songs. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the new one, Just Kids, you kind of have a, Kind of have I've noticed in the last two it's kind of a, a youthful vibe. Young love, just kids. <laughs> is there is there a, a reason that's behind funny. that? Uh, that's interesting. I, I yeah, I, just kids, young love. Because these are your most. I feel like these are your two most pop, like in a yeah. good way. Like the Beatles were pop. That's why I always say like pop is yeah, yeah, no, a negative say connotation. Most, yeah, and it's probably kind of like um, what I'm into, and like I think over the years like being a singer songwriter uh -huh. I just bothers me as a title because I'm like I feel like singer songwriters usually make really boring records and okay. like writing a song and then like you picture a guy in a stool like yeah like up there like this one's about Woodstock you know like that's just not <laughs> what I love about music or the artists that inspire me yeah. and so I think really I really wanted to make like a hip-hop leaning record yeah and yeah. just kids was this song that it just kind of happened. It was like, and it just felt like it embraced what the album was about, was like this kind of reflection on the forces that form you and being nostalgic about like middle school and, yeah. you know, Jordans with reflector tongues and Bo Jackson posters and the Nike c campaigns and black and white. I mean, the cover was kind of trying to be like an old Michael Jordan poster. You yeah. Know, like oh, I see that. Bo totally. Jackson or Wings or something, yeah. you know, like those were... I was just really nostalgic about that era of my life, and a lot of the songs were these really personal 
songs about moving from Oregon or uh, growing up in 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 Oregon, you know. So I just mm -hmm. just kids seem to be the the fitting song and title. I feel like your influences range the, the gambit. Yes, and I I am definitely if you're going to criticize me of something, it's probably being schizophrenic a little bit of loving. I love music and it's interesting to me and. I'm more of like the Paul Simon, like he's my hero yeah. more than maybe like... It's a great hero to have. Yeah, like, well, he's like, every album, he's like, oh, that looks fun, I want to try that, you know? And he's like working with, that, like, African choirs it's, to, like, Peruvian bands and... To Art Garfunkel. Yeah, to, well, to Art Garfunkel. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that that is uh, interesting to me. I like that more than, say, you know, the Jack Johnson who's like... Yeah. known as Lane and he's like made yeah. he's kind of had parameters on his art in a really cool way that's like yeah. I, I respect him for that he's yeah. stuck to kind of this lane but I, I don't know I enjoy the other thing and so I'm influenced by a lot of what I'm listening to you know yeah. so, so if it's more hip hop driven stuff or if it's like even some of the electronic music and like really some of like the deep house EDM stuff I'm into uh -huh. right now which I'm curious to see how that what that means but um, I've heard you mention Diggable Planets, Bruce Hornsby, and in, in, in past interviews, and, yeah, well, and guys this, like that. For Just Kids, it was really like a 90s, like, like I really wanted to explore like 90s sounds, and then like a lot of like hip hop influences. Uh -huh. I, I kept being like, what would, my dream was to make, if Paul Simon and like Kanye West were hanging out, yeah. talking about like Belle Biv DeVoe, that's the record that I okay. wanted to make. <laughs> and I mean, I don't, I don't know if I got there, but. Cool. It sounds good when I say it. It makes sense. <laughs> I mean, McCart Paul McCartney and Kanye West are making music together now, that so is I cool. feel like that, that could work. I mean, Springsteen or McCart or uh, 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 Paul Simon, any of those guys would, yeah, are like the heroes that I would love to work with one day. My biggest name dropping story was I walked into my publisher at EMI. I don't know if I've ever told anybody this, but uh, I walked into my publisher. And there was a band there, and they and um, they'd come in and said, "Oh, we love Matt Carney." And they pointed to a poster, and and um, the publisher was like, "Well, how do you know him?" He's like, "Well, Bruce gave your CD to another band oh, that walked in." I was like, oh, "Bruce Springsteen knows I'm alive. Like he knows that I'm a human being." So I didn't talk for like a day. Just kind of walked around telling people, "Hey, yeah. Springsteen knows who I am." Yeah, I love Born to Run, and I. But I also really love Born in the USA just because, like, sometimes we do a Dancing in the Dark cover. Or just such, it's like that's an amazing pop, pop and rock album. Like yeah. every song is just yeah. like perfect, and it's a great body of work, and makes me want to go buy like a Thunderbird and work on it. Yeah. And, like move to Jersey. <laughs> For more, visit mattcarney.com and be sure to follow the singer on his social media sites at Matt Carney. Well, that'll do it for today's show. I want to give a big thank you to my guest, Matt Carney, and of course to the pageant. And on behalf of the entire crew, my name is Ben Province, and I'm asking you to show me the music.